welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, I get a new custom fixed blade. We take a look at uh, Crudo Knives and a couple of their new offerings coming out in 2021. And then I list off for my edification and yours, uh, my fixed blade everyday carry knives, because there there have been some some additions here. These are these are mostly custom and some limited batch. But first, it's my weekly opportunity or my bi-weekly at this point with Thursday Night Knives opportunity to show off what I've been carrying today in my pockets. Uh, today I'm 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 rolling with three knives a uh, somewhat large, a somewhat small, and a fixed blade, absolutely fixed blade. And uh, so let me let me get to it. Uh, this first one I haven't carried in a while, and this is a hard use folder that I've actually used hard, cutting carpet, and uh, when we did a remodel in one of our rooms in the basement. This is the Zero Tolerance 0630. It is, I always have to double check the numbers on these ZTs. Uh, it is the Emerson, uh, one of the three Emerson collaborations with Zero Tolerance Knives. And uh, this one emulates, or I don't know, it, it's, a, it's a sort of tip of the hat, I'll, I'll put it that way, to the, um, to the banana blade, the CQC8 blade, uh, just a little bit wider. And then later, they came out with the Tiger. Uh, Emerson came out with the Tiger, and this looks just like the Tiger blade. Uh, of course, one of the differences is it is not chisel ground on that cutting edge. It is a V ground bevel and then a, a V ground cutting edge, unlike uh, Emerson knives, which are chisel edged blades. This one uh, came with a very, very like gray man boring uh, G10 handle. I replaced it with this nice, um, this is uh, linen. Uh, micarta. You can tell it's linen versus canvas versus uh, burlap. Linen is has the most fine uh, weave there, fine weave structure. Canvas is a bit larger. And then, you know, burlap, it's big and sloppy with lots of gaps in it. I love burlap micarta. That's that's not a diss in any way. Uh, so yeah, I've been carrying this today. A little heavy in the shorts, I got to say. Um, when I got home today, I put on a pair of shorts and I don't do wardrobe changes with knives. If I start that day with that knife, I carry it all the way to the end of the day. And uh, I got to say, it's been banging around in the shorts a little bit, but uh, <laughs> uh, I do love this knife and uh, it's been a nice reunion. Uh, it's been sitting in the case untouched for a little while, so I figured I'd bust it out. Been in an Emerson frame of mind. I guess that never changes, uh, but I figured why not Why not get the, D, the, the ZT out? Uh, now for the smaller cutting chores, say when I'm, want to impress or just not frighten the sheeple in my life. And that's a term of endearment at this point. Uh, I had the rock wall by tactile knives. People love this knife. I love this knife, but I mean, you pull this out and show a non knife person, this knife, and they really get it. They appreciate it. Uh, I think it's a handsome, it's small. It, when it's closed up, it's the size of a uh, packet of chewing gum, like the old Wrigley's, or the uh, or the old uh, juicy fruit packs were this size, and uh, so it's non-threatening, very nice to look at, and it it works like a charm. I mean, it's a very sharp, very very nicely sharp uh, ground blade, but also it's got this excellent tip. You know, a lot of um, EDC friendly knives have less menacing tips. To me, this is. Uh, this is just a perfect shape here. It's great for getting into those uh, hard to breach, thick, small clamshell packaging uh, packages. It's great for that. And, uh, you know, everything else too. It's really beautifully put together. Check out our uh, podcast with, with uh, uh, Mr. Miller from over there at uh, Tactile Turn, Michael Miller. He does a uh, really nice job with... Uh, well, I guess uh, sort of marketing that company, and uh, Will is their is their CEO. Anyway, Tactile Turn uh, is a knife company. I mean, is a pen company from which Tactile Knives came from. 
from which tactile knives came. They are based in Texas, very, very proudly based in Texas. Uh, Rockwall does not refer to the climbing apparatus you'll find at a gym. Rockwall refers to uh, a, a county in Texas, and they name all of their knives after counties in Texas. At least that's the plan. They have a slip joint on the way out. Just got uh, number 85, I think, on the wait list for their new slip joint that looks really nice. And I got a chance to check out a prototype at uh, Blade Show. Very nice. And then they have some kitchen. Uh, they're working on a kitchen knife, too. So no doubt they will be uh, pumping out some really cool stuff in the future. All done in-house, except for their stop pins they buy from someone else, but it's all made in Texas. Uh, lastly, uh, I'm carrying my newish, newish because I've gotten something new since it, but this is new. Okay. Got this. Uh, I think at the point I'm, I'm recording this a week ago and, um, it's the BGM knives Quaken. BGM knives, um, is an awesome company. It's one, one gentleman making, making really, really nice EDC fixed blades however you want it, man. He, he will give it to you in five different steels. Uh, you can choose from five different steels, either high carbon or um, stainless. I chose 3V uh, because 3V and uh, I can't remember what the other one that he offers are more expensive and he's already charging such a re reasonable price. I figured I'd go Cadillac with this and I got, uh, I got 3V steel, had him uh, hollow grind it he will grind it however you want. Chisel, you want a chisel ground, he'll do chisel ground. You want double bevel, double bevel, he'll give you. You want it uh, hollow ground, you want it flat ground, full flat ground, whatever you want, this guy will do it. And uh, uh, his name is Miller also. And uh, man, just a, he's John Miller. Michael Miller is the guy from, uh, from Tactile. Uh, I think I just screwed that up. But uh, so John Miller from BGM Knives will make the knife however you want. He also um, offers G10 or micarta handle scales or a cord wrap. I love cord wrap. I've been into it recently. It also carries very nicely because it tends to be thinner and lighter. And if you if you plan on EDCing this like I do in my waistband at three o'clock, a, a cord wrap is is a nice touch because it's thin but very grippy. This is hardened with some sort of epoxy or or some sort of you know resin material. And that purple and green was my choice. I know a lot of people. It's a polarizing wrap, if you will. A lot of people aren't crazy about it, but I saw him make this for someone else. That color combination, and I had to have it. I love purple, love green, love the cord wrap, and just having that that uh, toxic green peeking through the purple is very pleasing to me. What else is pleasing is this awesome sheath. Listen to this. Man, does that lock in there. You'd think with the cord wrapping, it would have a mushier, uh, softer kind of engagement, uh, but it doesn't. This thing, well, it locks locks right in. So that's what I've been carrying today. Here, I'll, I'll remove this from the sheath and put that there so you can gaze upon that little tableau. Uh, so we just did a Gentleman Junkie giveaway last week, uh, uh, Thursday Night Knives, and I just wanted to mention it was John Ladner. John, congratulations on winning the awesome Rapid Fire Coyote from Off Grid Knives. We also, on that episode, were, um, it, man, we, it, was a, it was a killer episode. We had uh, Doug Ritter right up front, came on, talked about knife rights, and talked about the Ultimate Steel, their annual fundraising um, uh, drive, which just began where you can win all these awesome prizes. And even just for donating, you get a knife. I mean, how awesome is that? And then uh, it was great to catch up with him. And then he dipped out for dinner. And then a little bit later on, Carrie Orifice of Off Grid Knives came on and talked about some of their new wares. Some of those wares he sent along to me to check out, and I'll be showing them off in a few minutes. Um, also, I wanted to mention we have a new gentleman junkie that is our high highest tier of support. Uh, on Patreon. And uh, this gentleman's name is Shane Miller. Shane Miller, thank you so much for uh, joining the uh, joining the, the Gentleman Junkie crew. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know Jim really appreciates it. You know, we get this, uh, we get a little uh, monthly nut that can go towards, uh, well, keeping, keeping the show on the air. And uh, well, occasionally, like uh, during Blade Show, I use some of that money to buy one of these knives. Um, but uh, you know, it's a it's a reasonable price, and you don't have to be a gentleman junkie. You could be a traditional junkie, or a tactical junkie for uh, different levels of support three, five, and ten dollars. So join us at on Patreon. I think uh, I think you'll 
I think you'll be really happy with it. Uh, Shane, thank you again. I just wanted to uh, mention Shane. This is his shout out. Um, and we are going to, uh, we're, we're going to be moving along. We're going to check out uh, one uh, company, Crudo Knives. You may have remembered them from the Snag Karambit from a few years back, a tactical knife company. They've done a little bit of retooling. We'll talk about that for a, for a minute. And then a um, little state of the collection. But first, help support the show on Patreon. You get Knife Junkie stickers, a mention on the podcast like you just heard, early access to the Sunday interview and midweek supplemental shows, and monthly knife giveaways. Uh, your support really helps us keep this show on the air or on the web, and we really appreciate it. So check us out on Patreon and see what helping us can get you. Quickest way to get there is by going to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So Crudo Knives. Crudo Knives is a tactical folding uh, knife company designed uh, by, it. A, it's a one-man band, basically. Um, and uh, uh, Mr. Crudo designs knives and then has them made. And he's been doing this for, I don't know, close to 10 years at this point. Um, I've always kind of admired the uh, the knives he puts out because they're they're audaciously tactical and um, and really just uh, unique. They are very unique the way they look. And so I've always kind of been interested in them. I don't actually own any and never have, but uh, Louis Crudo keeps keeps go going with the with these really cool tactical designs. Now he updated his Dow um, and that's that's what we're looking at right here. Dao based on the Chinese sword, the big, the big Dao sword that, um, you know, it's a battle sword. It's a big two-handed sword and it's got a blade shape just like that. Well, he has uh, done some things in a, in the redesign and some tweaks to uh, change the materials, make it, put it a little bit more in reach to a broader audience, broader uh, group of collectors. And then he's changed a little bit of the, um, of the grip here. Now, that big thumb wedge you see on the top of the blade is a signature uh, feature to a number of the Crudo knives. And not only does it add a great thumb ramp and a great way to open it uh, one-handed, but I've seen it snagged on the pocket in wave-like fashion. So you, you, you get a lot of, uh, well, on this knife, it looks like you have three different ways to deploy. You've got the flipper, you've got the slow you know, sweep out with that thumb wedge, and then you just can snag it on the pocket and pull it that way too. Now he's taken that thumb wedge, moved it a little bit closer to the handle, and created more of a of a, uh, a tension between the thumb and the forefinger uh, to give it a a nice solid grip. I love the shape of that blade. It's sort of a well, obviously it's the tip of the hat to the Dao sword, but it's also kind of in the in the cleavery um, <clears throat> genre, and I I really like it. Also, the handle looks very comfortable to me. The one large finger swail on the back. And then the way the pommel has that little angle at the end for you to hook your thumb over. It uh, just looks like Louis Crudo really takes into account uh, the tactical uses of the knife and how it might be held and used. And uh, it's very apparent on this knife. Also, you get that nice big finger choil. If you're going to be using it for work, uh, you can move up and, and get more precision with your cutting. So uh, this is looking cool. He's also um, pulling out the, uh, the his Karambity designs. Uh, the ones on the one on the very bottom right, the Snag NSS, looks the most like his uh, his legacy Snag design with that little thumb thing that uh, that little thumb ramp that folds out on the back, um, and that and that uh, and that uh, super curved upswept blade. But he's also doing the iconic, the incorrigible, the Snag bit, and the Snag NSS. And these are all going to be, these are all redesigns. He mentions in the article here that the ring is, uh, yes, you can use it for all those uh, Karambit style manipulations and such, but it's also there because it adds a nice bit of grip to a small knife, that's for sure, whether you have your finger in there or not. And also it helps on deployment. Uh, that's something I learned from the, the cog ring from, from Snaggletooth. Uh, you know, I don't use that cog ring on the end of my Recon 1 as a karambit thing. I use it as a as a sort of a stiff fob or something that you can actually grab onto and use to pull out. So 
keep your eyes open for these crudo knives 2021 lineup he has uh he he has retooled them, retooled the materials and such, so that uh, they're a little bit more affordable and uh, just as cool looking as ever. So check those out for sure. Uh, still to come, we're going to get into the uh, state of the collection and also my list. I ah, just warms my heart. My list of custom and small batch EDC fixed blades, uh, mostly with a tactical bent. I'm going to show those off because I've gotten a number of new ones recently and. Uh, uh, they they deserve a little a little air a little airplay her <laughs> airplay here um but before we dig in be sure to like comment and subscribe hit the notification bell so you know each time we have a video uploading and be here for thursday night knives every thursday night almost every thursday night except when i'm on vacation and uh check out our live streams um that's Thursday Night Knives. And, and as you know, as I mentioned from last week's show, we get people joining us, and that's so awesome. But this week, we had uh, Doug Ritter and Carrie from Off Grid Knives joining us. So just a, a real nice treat to talk to the people uh, that affect the knife world so directly. Uh, that's uh, Thursday Eastern Standard Time. Also, check out uh, my close-up videos. I've been banging those out recently, really enjoying doing them uh, because I've had a lot of knives coming through here. And so I have them scheduled out for two weeks out. So, so please check out, keep your eyes open for my close-up videos. Uh, they are really fun to do and really fun to show off these nice knives close up. So check out those close-up videos right here on the Knife Junkie channel on YouTube. Today's podcast is brought to you in part by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash knife junkie. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Again, that's www.audibletrial.com forward slash knife junkie. So the first knife that we're going to talk about in the state of the collection today, you saw last Thursday night, if you joined us for uh, Thursday Night Knives, it, um, it's a custom-made knife from a newish maker. He's a, uh, he's a graphic designer, and he's got a great eye. I mean, I think the graphic designing thing is really uh, doing him right when it comes to making knives and designing knives. Um, so you saw just a minute of it last week, but I want to dig in a little bit more. This is the Ron Steele designed shrine. Um, <laughs> geez, the Ron Steele designed prime. It's a drop point. He also has recently started making a clip point, which is also awesome. This was a, a maker introduced to me by our good friend, Justin at tier one at gear reviews. And uh, once I had his borrowed prime, I had to order one with this guy. Ron, a great guy to work with and just does beautiful work. So this is his prime. It's a drop point, as you can see. It's got a nice uh, straight here, and then it's got a little belly here, and then an up. You know, it's a very unique looking drop point to me, especially with that double edge. So uh, this was the first double edge prime he's done. I, I asked him if he would do it, and he said, nah, I haven't done that before, but let me check it out. And he's uh, obviously he likes a challenge and he figured it out and he absolutely nailed it. He was his concern was having a double edge so close to this run of jimping that your thumb would run up on there. Uh, but he, you know, determined that that wasn't a factor and he fixed it. And he, and, or I should say he uh, he made it happen. And uh, so this is ADCRV and it's got a deep acid etch. You can see the grains of this cold road, rolled steel. Very cool, and uh, and then it's tumbled, and look at this beautiful linen micarta handle in maroon. He asked me what I wanted for the handle. I happened to be at Blade Show at the time, and I was like, "Oh my god, I got to stop everything and answer this." And uh, I said, "If you if you can find really like deep maroon linen micarta, please get that." And that's what he did. And he said, uh, "Can I, you know, it? Do you, do you want anything else? I mean, it's going to be kind of plain." And I said. Do your thing. I, I love what you do with handles. Uh, follow your instincts, and he did. And and uh, so he put gray and black G10 liners, and then divided the handle with them too. And I think that looks so cool. It's understated, but beautiful. It's it's unique, um, but it doesn't jump out and slap you in the face. And I love that. Uh, that's the job of the knife, right? It feels great in hand. Really, really nice in hand. I have to get 
and he makes a great sheath. That is a thing. You have to make a great sheath if you're going to be selling a knife like this. Uh, the sheath cannot be lackluster because it's what you're carrying the thing around in. I know a lot of custom fixed blades don't come with sheaths, and that's fine, uh, especially like um, really expensive uh, forged knives. Oftentimes, you'll see they just don't come with a sheath, so you hire someone to do that. That's that's a thing, and I get it. But when you're making a knife like this, and you're uh, making it for everyday carry, and you're offering a sheath, uh, please make it as good as, as this. And uh, what a beautiful job he did here. So, uh, yeah, this is the Prime from Ron Steel Designs. And here's a little uh, quick roll-in of, uh, of the untying of this knife. I call it an untying because he wrapped it up in brown paper with string, and I just love that. I wasn't going to do an unboxing video, but uh, when I saw how he sent it, I had to do it. So here you go. Yeah, check him out on Instagram, Ron Steel Design, as you can see from his card there. And uh, you will not be disappointed. My daughter Eden shot this. And I think one of these days, one of these years, I'm going to bring her to Blade Show and she can be my, my camera girl. And uh, yeah, look at that. Look at that little, little zoom in she did right on the fly. Good job, baby. Good job. Uh, okay, so Ron Steel Design, that's the prime. Uh, I want to quickly show you, I know we talked a lot about this on Thursday Night Knives, but I want to quickly show you the four off-grid knives that Carrie sent me um, from the new lineup. Uh, this is the Hoglet, an awesome little fixed blade cleavery knife. And look at this, talk about a good sheath. Shoots right off the, shoots right off the blade with the thumb. This is the Hoglet. It's a little EDC fixed blade and utility blade. And oh my gosh, it feels great in hand. It's a cryo cryogenically treated D2 with a, with a contoured uh, G10 handle. Uh, how big is this blade? This blade is almost three inches and uh, a really comfortable one. It's funny. Um, he said he was going to send me some knives and I was like, oh, cool. So I went to their, <laughs> I went to their website and made a wish list. And he actually sent the four knives that I thought were the absolute bombest, coolest. Uh, next one is the Grizzly. This is a camp chef's knife. So it's an, it's, it's a do all knife. It's a knife you can use in the woods. And then once you're done banging around in the woods, you can use it to prep your camp meal because it is super thin super broad and extremely slicey. Look at that thing. This is going to be my travel knife. When we go to this, uh, this one timeshare up in the mountains, um, you know, we do all of our cooking while we're there and, um, they have these crappy little Ginsu's that have been used to the point where, I mean, even the serrations are dull. So I always bring my own little set of knives, but this time when we go up there, I'm going to bring just this because it will, it will act as my trips fixed blade and it will be a superior kitchen knife. I've used this to shave um, onions, like get them really thin. I made burgers a couple of nights ago and uh, man, that is a great chef's knife. And another thing that's good about a chef's knife, especially when it's this broad, is that when you cut all your stuff, it makes for a great um, board knife or palette knife you know you can just scoop all your materials up on this really broad surface and get them to the pan very psyched about that next a car that i mean a car um no this is a knife but it's a knife that i will start using in the car i i thought at first i'd keep it in the car but my car has been broken into and i've i've lost knives that way so i'm not going to do that but this knife the enforcer xl this giant i'm going to say it reverse tanto. I didn't like saying it, but that's what, what it's being called, uh, is I would say more of a bellied Warncliffe. This thing is a giant. It's a beast. It's a four inch blade with a huge, uh, um, glass breaker on the back and really nicely raised diamond patterned G10 handle on bearings. And, uh, this is going to ride. I think this is going to replace my um, my Recon one in my backpack so that when I'm in the car, if anything happens and I need this sort of capability, um, I have it. And, and why I keep saying the car is because of that glass breaker. Yeah, look at that. So really cool knife. I love that blade shape. And I, you know, I'm just such a big fan of the big knives and uh, the jimping he's been putting on his 
all three of these so far, the jimping is awesome. All right, and lastly, he was kind enough to send uh, a really, really cool one. This is the Cayman EDC. Look at that. Look at that amazing, dramatic Bowie blade. And actually, it does look like a caiman. A caiman is a small crocodile that you see in um, Central and South America. And uh, when you look at that blade, it does look like a, a gnarly, threatening, um, dramatic Bowie. But it also looks like a gnarly, threatening, dramatic caiman to me. With this swoop down, uh, looks uh, is sort of evocative of their somewhat thin and long nose on that, on that uh, swedge there on the clip. So this is a little bit smaller, as you can see, it's about a three and 3.4 inch blade, very ergonomic handle and excellent jimping, and just a great little D2 bladed G10 handled EDC knife. Also on bearings, also super smooth. These are made by Best Tech. So if you know Best Tech and you like and trust Best Tech, which I do, their knives are awesome. And you like these designs, which I do, then you know that they're going to be good knives. So check out Off Grid Knives. This sounds like an advertisement. So check out Off Grid Knives. Uh, I'm really, uh, really pleased with this selection he sent out. And I got to say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you, Kerry. It's, uh, it's much appreciated. We just gave away one of his knives here, and uh, now that I have a growing collection of these, because uh, I have some others I, uh, that you've seen here. Now I feel like, oh man, now I have to get a rapid fire back into my collection. But uh, we'll, we'll have to hold on, on, on. We'll have to hold out on that for a while. You know what? Can't have coffee today. You'll know the reason later. But so that's why I'm stumbling and mumbling. Like someone famous we know, stumbling and mumbling. But uh, hopefully I'm effective at my job here. So, all right, next, I want to talk about my custom and small batch EDC fixed blade knives. Um, I feel like I'm kind of showing off, but that's kind of what this thing is uh, anyway. But this, these are the knives that have been, um, that I've been slowly acquiring. Um, and it started from this podcast, talking and meeting to people, uh, talking to people and meeting them, uh, custom knife makers and, and, and really making that move. And when I say that move, that doesn't mean I'm moving away from production knives. It means I'm expanding into custom knives and um i you know i love to carry fixed blade knives and they they generally tend to have to be small to do that so uh on an edc basis so i just wanted to pull them out and show you i don't know my re my most recent seven <laughs> and uh this is the bulk of that collection uh i'll start with the round steel which i just mentioned the prime. Uh, most of these uh, by choice are going to be double-edged. Some of them not, uh, but just a beautiful knife. This is, uh, when it's not double-edged, a great, great utility design. When it's double-edged, still a great utility design, just be more careful. There's plenty of real estate up here for your thumb to come up and do hard work without actually contacting that, uh, that top edge. Uh, but you can get yours from Ron Steele if you check him out, Ron Steele Design on Instagram. Um, you can get yours without that second edge and not to mention um, his other designs. He's got a lot of smaller designs that uh, he's been using um, G Carta, the, that beautiful Mexican blanket G Carta on these little tantos and these little worn cliffs, man, really, really nice work. Uh, the second one I'm going to show is also one that you've seen on this show uh, just today. And it's the BGM Quaken. I'm not going to go on about this, but you know I love it. I also loved the opportunity to order at Hollow Ground because I just love Hollow Ground blades. And with that really, really deep notch there, that really deep sharpening choil, and the really thin grind behind the edge, thin hollow grind, you can use this thing your whole life. This is 3V and sharpen it all the way up to that notch, and you'll still have a thin behind the edge uh, cutter here. So check out him. He's, he's, Awesome guy and a, and a great maker, very communicative. Both of these makers here, very communicative during the process. Um, you know, making sure that they're getting it right, asking questions and uh, showing updates, you know. This one, uh, very, very fond of, I've been carrying this one quite a bit because it's nice and thin and also thinly hollow ground and quite sharp. This is your, no, this is my, Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. Oh, look at that. Beautiful upswept Persian style blade. 
but with this thumb swale here, it also looks a bit like a clip point and uh, like a like a modified Bowie. And uh, I ordered this from Eric after we had our our conversation here on the podcast and asked him if he would so kindly uh, put a put a top edge on. He obliged. It's nice and sharp, a different kind of sharp. It's more of a wedge-like sharp, a tearing, gouging kind of sharp than this nice slicing, cutting sharp. Also, like the BGM knife, knife, very, very thin. Also, starting from thinner blade stock. So you have a thin, hollow grind, a thin, tall, hollow grind on thin blade stock. It's going to be like a laser beam. And this is when it cuts through stuff. I've uh, I've used this for, you know, light utility because that that tip, you know me and tips, that light utility, uh, it really excels because it's so thin, so sharp, and so very slicey. Speaking of, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> this is another one that I ordered from a guy that we had on the show, um, Ken Vehikite of Black Rock Knives. Uh, we uh, had a great conversation. He's an awesome dude and just designs really cool knives. This this guy, uh, Ken, I just discovered doing a search on Instagram one day, years back for cool knives, found his stuff, fell in love with it, followed him for so long. And then I was just like, I got to get him on the show and talk about his knives. And this is the one that that uh, really drew me in, but he's got a lot of bigger, uh, bigger ones and all different types if the ring isn't your thing. But this is the monkey thumper. Uh, so I ordered a custom monkey thumper from him when I saw he had cut out a bunch of billets for it and uh, sent out a uh, an Instagram post. This was maybe two years ago at this point, saying, I'm making monkey thumpers. Anyone want in? And I, I got in as quickly as I could, told him my handle color preference, and uh, also asked if he would uh, grind the considerable harpoon swedge and make it double-edged. He obliged. And... Uh, I got this, you know, when it was ready and look at this thing. It is a, it is an incredible knife. I really love the shape of the handle because you don't need to use the ring if you don't want to. There's plenty there for you to grab onto without it and then use the flat part of the ring as a point if you need to knock someone's noggin with it. Uh, but in the traditional karambit style uh, grip, it fits perfectly. And then you still have that point there that you can use. Really love this monkey thumper. Uh, it's a, I think it's 1560. I can't remember what the steel is, but I love how he treats it. I love the the rock pattern in the handle. Each one is its own sort of unique fingerprint. And uh, I just dig this up here. That's sort of that treatment. So check out uh, Black Rock Knives. Uh, Ken Vahikite is is on the mend. He, he had a stroke, uh, but he has... Um, I see he's working out and getting himself better, and he will be back to making custom knives soon. If you like this design, you can check out Fox Knives. They have done two of his designs for 2021, uh, the this monkey thumper and then a knife that we uh, auctioned off here to benefit him, uh, which is the Fox Ryu, and it's a traditional style um, Japanese tanto. Both of his design and... Uh, executed beautifully by Fox. I had a chance to heft them both, the Ryu right here in my own knife cave, and then the Monkey Thumper at Blade Show. Fox knives, man, they know what they're doing. We were talking about thin and slicey before. Perhaps the king of thin and slicey is Alex Steingraber, and uh, this shark is an awesome EDC fixed blade. He does these in limited batches. I don't know what the number is, but this was a crew wear batch. And this is the one and only knife I have in my collection uh, from CPM crew wear. I used this when I first got it. I used it all the time. And then it got eclipsed by other knives that, that came in. But um, this, is a, this is just a great utility knife. Of course, you could use it in a pinch like a defensive knife, but that's not what this is intended for. The feel in hand, the ergonomics, are very simple and very comfortable. This is just a, an all-day user, and I have used it all day. Uh, 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 after a um, an epic IKEA build here, you know, we got a whole bunch of furniture for my daughter's this sort of rehashed room, and uh, this this was my primary cutting down. You know, I, I, you 
you don't have to cut down every box into tiny little bits, but I do find that it fits in the recycle bin uh, much easier and it's just a lot of fun. And this was the knife that I used primarily for that. And man, it's awesome. Very thinly ground and, and uh, fully flat ground there. Beautiful. Excellent work he does. He's been doing these uh, sort of thin glow in the dark handles recently. Kind of interesting. Second to last knife here, I want to mention my EDC fixed blade knives of a custom bent is this gorgeous Dirk Pinkerton Pickal style knife. Uh, I'm showing them all with the sheath because all of these sheaths to, to a sheath are awesome. They're, they're all really well done. Most of them don't come with clips. So uh, I've been digging these ulti clips. I also like the, uh, I think this is the Tracker Dan clip that came with the Voodoo. Really nice. So I know you've seen this because I've been showing it off a lot recently, but let's just pretend it's brand new to you. Look at this gorgeous thing. Our eyes met across a crowded room. I pushed people out of the way to get to it because I was afraid that uh, someone else would see it and snag it before I got to it. This knife is just beautiful. Dirk Pinkerton really knows how to not only design a knife, but how to grind a blade. Uh, his un un uncoated blades are evidence of that. I mean, you look at this and, and you can tell it's just it's just impeccable, impeccably done. And then you look at his uh, knives that aren't coated and you can just see the grind lines. You can see uh, see how, man, he has really perfected it. I was recently speaking with um, uh, Kendrick. Um, 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 uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's just, uh, it's just, his first name just somehow evaporated off of my mind. Uh, but uh, knife maker makes folders, last name Kendrick. Damn, sorry about that. But he was, we were talking about, uh, Dirk Pinkerton came up and he said, since the moment he put steel to a grinder, he was like perfection. Uh, so he got major props from another really, really awesome knife maker. Uh, so uh, yeah, this this thing rides uh, Sean Kendrick. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Jeez, I'm sorry about that. Sean Kendrick was mentioning how awesome uh, Dirk Pinkerton is. Uh, they're both Ohio boys, as am I. And uh, look at that shape. It's just that perfect reach out and touch someone sort of uh, angle to uh, from the blade to the handle. And then, uh, of course, this is you get that bonus double edge. Most Pical style knives have just the inner edge and the tip sharp. This one has, you know, just leaves you with so many possibilities. And then that beautiful, cheerful orange and yellow micarta handle w next to the black. It's just a gorgeous knife, you know, and, and, and I can't decide which one is my favorite, but in this very moment right now, this is my favorite until we get this one. Our last, uh, our last edition here, also a Blade Show pickup from a man named Dylan Grace. He's got a company called Dylan Grace Blade Company or DG Blade Co. You see it on Instagram. And uh, he does this unique thing with the sheaths where instead of Kydex, he does uh, a water molded leather. And they pretty much have the effect of Kydex. I mean, except for, uh, you know, I guess they're more susceptible to the elements, but that knife is locked in there and not rattling at all, but easily removed. And the knife is his Warney scalpel. At least that's what I'm calling it. It was nameless when I got it. But look at this. Uh, the format looks like a scalpel with the longer handle, the shorter blade, and uh, just a beautifully forged worn cliff. This is 01 tool steel. Very, very sharp. And uh, all of his knives have this kind of look, that sort of rustic look but a very refined bevel and very refined edge. Let me see if I can clean that off a little bit. And uh, he uses a lot of wood, primarily maybe all wood for all of his handles. Uh, but this, this one really cried out to me. He had a number of pieces on his table there at Blade, but this one just drew me in. And um, first of all, because it's contoured, he leaves some of his handles squared off, which is a great uh, leads to a great grip. You know, you don't want the knife turning on you if it's too rounded. But this one was just so beautiful with its contouring and its Buckeye Burl. That is Buckeye Burl. And as I mentioned before, I come from Ohio, the Buckeye State. So it seemed to be, uh, it seemed to be a kismet. So I grabbed it 
And, uh, well, obviously I paid for it. Didn't just grab it. That's illegal. And, uh, I love this thing. So it actually rides just like Kydex with this leather sheath in the waistband. And uh, so far, I haven't had problems. Now, I wonder if as it gets warm, if it's going to start molding to the contours of my body and make it more difficult to draw and uh, and and to replace. Uh, I'm just not sure about that. Something tells me, no, it's very, very stout full grain leather. So I have a feeling it, it won't be doing that. Just a beautiful knife. Check him out. Check all these guys out. I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly rattle off uh, who they are. They're all on Instagram, the greatest place to gawk at knives and to uh, and to select your your favorite maker. Ron Steele Jr. Ron Steele Design, BGM Blade Works here with the Quaken. This is uh, um, Mr. Eric Carter, uh, uh, Carter Custom Knives, uh, Ken Vahikite and Black Rock Knives. This is uh, Alex Steingraber, Steingraber Performance Knives. Um, Dirk Pinkerton, who makes a lot of, uh, does a lot of production designs. And DG Blade Co., Dylan Grace Blade Company. Check all these makers out. Uh, they're all, you know, you can get something from them. For, the prices vary for sure. Um, but uh, some, when you discover a new maker like, like these guys, I didn't discover them. They were pointed to me by viewers, um, you know, you or this. You can really get in on on the at the beginning part of a of a knife maker's career and and get some really awesome knives at at reasonable prices. You know, as people become more and more famous and their work becomes more and more actually, it's more the more the latter. Um, the more someone's knives are in demand, the higher the prices are going to go. Obviously, and some knife makers try and chase that secondary uh, market price where they see, oh my gosh, someone just sold my knife for a thousand bucks. I better start charging a thousand bucks. And then, and then, you know, they're out in the stratosphere and you have to be a, you have to be a high roller to get their work. So check out all these guys. I'm sure they'd love the support, not only of the follow, but uh, you know, see, see what you can see, what you can order from them. Just great stuff. All right. Well, that's it for my list of custom and small batch EDC fixed blade knives. Uh, coming up on Sunday, make sure you check out episode number 228 with Spencer Marquardt of the Finch Knife Company. Talk about some charming, cool knives. And he's a great guy too. We have an awesome conversation and you can find out about the Finch story. And then you can also find out about what is in the offing for these guys. They got some great knives on their way out. One of which, to me, is evocative of a of a um, Italian switchblade. So I'm really looking forward to checking that one out. Uh, also, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as I mentioned before, and hit the notification bell because I've been uploading a lot of stuff recently, and uh, I know you want to catch it all. You don't want to miss a moment. You don't want to miss a thing, just like Aerosmith said. So on that note, I will leave it right there. Thanks again, and thank you uh, to Jim, as always, working his magic behind the switcher. I am Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.